figure out the high school.
from Ghana Football Program. So before I get started, um, super excited about the announcement, but I first want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to hear from the most amazing leader in the history of our institution, our president, Brian Sandoval. <laughs> So I want to thank all of you for being here today. Um, we know, and I can speak for myself, I've been coming to Wolfpack football games for over 50 years, and I love the Wolfpack, and I love this football program. So this is an important moment for our community, for this region, and for our state. You know, we're celebrating our 150th anniversary this year for the university, and our history's been a proud one. And so I want to thank all of you, this community who's been so supportive through the years and is supportive now, and that's been such a source of pride for this program. I had a chance to talk with Coach and talk to him about the depth of devotion in this community for this program. You know, and I want to acknowledge our football players that are on the I'm going to give them a big hand. You know, this, this is a really special group of young men. And I've had the privilege of, of watching them personally, and I know they do so much for this university and for this program and how hard they work on the field and in the classroom. And they do nothing but exude class, commitment, and a love for Wolfpack football and this community that's second to none. And I'll tell you, one of my favorite traditions when that team runs out on the field is that player who carries the Nevada flag to the 50-yard line. It, it really gives me goosebumps every time. And I want to thank Stephanie, Stephanie Ramp, who is the greatest athletic director in the United States of America. And her incredible leadership and her incredible commitment to the success of Wolfpath Athletics in our university. You know, and she, you'll hear from her more in a moment, but we knew, she knew, that this was a search that we had to get right. And I was absolutely confident in her approach during the search because she's so thorough, she's so well respected, and has such an impressive network of contacts through, throughout the United States of America. So she was very quickly able to pinpoint the coach that we announce today. And Stephanie, thank you and your entire team, which is just amazing for what you do for Wolfpack Athletics. And in a moment, I'm going to ask Stephanie to, to introduce formally and officially our new coach, Jeff Choate, to the University of Nevada. <laughs> Stephanie's obviously going to provide a lot more details, but we found a great football coach and we found a winner. And I believe this is the right hire at the right time at a very crucial moment in the history of Wolfpack football. Now, I've had an opportunity to sit down with Coach individually, and I asked him to come to coffee at 7 a.m. this morning. So um, he's an early riser, too, which is a good thing. But um, I've really been impressed with his passion, particularly for his players and for building a program. Now, you don't need to spend much time with Coach to sense his intensity and to realize that he's driven to succeed. He has a proven track record in building winning football programs. He's going to be in the college football playoff in a couple weeks, and congratulations on that, Coach. And he's played a critical role with Coach Chris Peterson in successes at both the University of Washington and Boise State University. And he returned Montana State to a kind of football glory as head coach 
that hadn't been experienced in Bozeman in a very long time. And this is where I want to make a really important point. Throughout his career, Coach Choate has won with passion for his players and what's really important to me, with integrity for the important job that he's been tasked to do. At Montana State, he was able to reestablish a winning culture. And he gave an interview last year, in fact, where he spoke about what he was most proud of during his tenure at Montana State. Yes, his teams won a lot of games, but what's more important to him were his players and that they always knew that he had given them his all. And as Coach put it, and Coach, by the way, you should put this on a bumper sticker. <laughs> Leadership is about making others better as a result of your presence. And that's what Coach Choate does. And that's why I am really excited about Coach Choate and what he will bring to Wolfpack football. He's truly a leader of the pack. And now he's the leader of the pack. So he's a tenacious and ferocious competitor, and he's a leader who has passion to do everything in his power so that his players can succeed. So it's, it's exciting. As I said, I'm going to finish where I started. This is a big moment in Wolfpack history and this university's history. And I know that the university, the community, and the entire state of Nevada are really excited about what the future holds. So I wish to welcome Coach Choate and his wonderful family, Janet, is here with us today. Give her a big hand. And I haven't met your daughter yet, but, uh, but welcome to the Wolfpack family. We are very excited about that. So now I'm going to welcome Stephanie back um, to the stage. But again, thank you, everyone, for being here. I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm ready to run through a wall and uh, go pack. Thank you. All right. Okay, let's get going on this. I could not be more excited. So thank you, President Sandoval. I will tell you, having um, the chance to talk to people in the football industry about the leadership on our campus is a huge selling point for this institution and this job. And that is a testament to everything he has done across this campus, across the state, and specifically for athletics. It is a amazing message to be able to talk to talk about that and a huge plus for Coach Choate. So uh, before talking about Coach Choate too much, I want to share a little bit about the uh, search. So as you, st as you know, we started a national search on Friday. I think it's important to understand we did not make calls until after noon on Friday. We, of course, had lots of calls in, but we did not make any calls until Friday afternoon. And I did not talk to any candidates until Saturday. So the number of calls, the numbers of, of texts, emails, all those things that came in is remarkable, right? There were so many, and the reason is because this is such a great job. So we live in an amazing place, the happiest city in America. We live, um, we work on a beautiful campus. Was that a clap for the happiest city in America? <laughs> um, we work on a, ba a beautiful campus, right? We all know that. Um, we have an, a remarkable leader that I've already talked about. Um, we also have a new turf, thanks to ITS. We have a new locker room. We have a new weight room, thanks to Joel and Courtney Batonio. And we're going to build an indoor field house. So we compete in a strong and stable conference that you can win. We live close proximity to California, and we also have a football program that has rich tradition. So all of those things combined make this an amazing job. So we started off, we got lots of names. We probably had over 50 people on our list. And we quickly started to narrow the search based on what we were looking for, specific criteria. But I want to first call out Casey Stangle, who is on our staff and is absolutely the best. Her ability to keep us organized, how she did research on our candidates, communicated. There's no way we would have gotten this search done this quickly without Casey. So Casey, thank you. Uh, and the rest of our staff, so I don't know if Merlene made it up here, but uh, Merlene has been working with the lawyers on the contracts and HR. Um, Joe Flores on the roster, NIL, the portal, financial aid. Uh, Matt Smith figuring out the finances. Um, and Sam Houghton, our communications and content effort. 
So we have an amazing team and they all have been working tirelessly to pull this off in addition to many, many other staff members like our development team and all of our content people. They'll need to sell tickets because that's what we want to be doing right now. Um, so thank you guys to our staff, if we can give them a round of applause. Okay, so we wanted to find a leader. We wanted to find the right leader. We wanted to find a person ideally with head coaching experience. We wanted a football guy. And the non-negotiable for me is we wanted to find a person who would pour into our student athletes and as a result, our student athletes will run through a wall for that leader. Everyone has different processes that they go through on a search, and mine's pretty specific. For me, it is critical that you learn everything about the candidates that you have, everything about them, before you ever talk to them. You learn the good, you learn the bad, you learn the non-negotiables. But for me, what I want to hear is what everybody that they work with on a daily basis says about them. And to me, that is so much more important than sitting across from somebody for an hour or two in an interview. You want to know what the people that they work with every day say about them. So that's what we did. So we talked to more and more people. And I'm not kidding, Jeff just separated himself. He was phenomenal with every single person that we talked to. So by the time I talked to Jeff on Saturday night after his game, during our basketball game, I felt like he was exactly what we needed for our program and could not wait to get on the phone with him. So I could run through the list of all the schools where he's worked, his accomplishments as a player, as an assistant coach, as a head coach, the co-defensive coordinator at Texas. All those things can be found in Wikipedia or on um, our press release. But for me, the most important thing was the character of the individual. How will he impact our student athletes? And how will he lead the tremendous Wolfpack football program that we have? So one of the important characteristics for me, I want to know how Jeff wakes up every day. So I asked Chris Peterson that. Chris Peterson says Jeff wakes up every day with passion in his heart to make a difference in kids' lives. Jeff wakes up every day with passion in his heart to make a difference in kids' lives. And this is coming from the unbelievably respected Chris Peterson. Not only did I talk to Chris Peterson for 30 minutes, talk to Coach Sarkeesian, as you might imagine, um, athletic directors, wherever, every place he's worked, whether it's Montana State, Washington, Texas, um, talk to former players, talk to people in recruiting that he worked with on various staffs, and the messages were all the same, all of them. So he has, of course, won everywhere he's been. He has just commanded one of the best defenses in the country, won a conference title on the biggest stage, and earned a number three ranking in the college football playoff yesterday. He's also won conference titles and coached in big games. But what I continue to hear over and over is that he is a culture builder. He is someone who is made to coach football. He pours into the lives of players and demands the same of his staff. He connects with people, and over and over you hear he is the best that there is. A fierce recruiter who absolutely gets after recruiting, and he surrounds himself, Janet included, and with other great recruiters. He knows what drives every player. I also heard that he's thoughtful in his responses. He's reasonable. He's purposeful in his actions. I heard he has high emotional intelligence. He's very self-aware, self -aware, highly motivated, and he can do every phase of coaching, not only the X's and O's and the schemes, but recruiting, and then also the donors and the community. All of those things are critical, yet hard to find in a coach. I continue to hear about his plan. He provides great clarity. He cut his teeth as a high school coach and um, teacher. And then he was a special teams guy. So special teams, not a football player, but special teams is very much about clarity and simple terms, short sound bites. So he's passionate about special teams. And again, you hear over and over, he is the best at his craft. So I continue to hear high energy all the time, high octane. He runs hot. 
He gets after it with the players, gets after it in recruiting, will get after it in this community. He knows what he wants and how he's gonna go get it. He is all gas, no brakes. He will rally the troops on day one, and you can probably ask our team, I think that happened today. He's innovative, he's fearless, he's creative. He figures out unique and, way, and innovative ways to accomplish success. He can do more with less. His players do well in school, they get involved in the community, and they're high character kids who are held accountable. I hear he's genuine and authentic. He has real conversations with people. He doesn't a shy away from anything. He can address anything, create healthy conversations, and he empowers his staff. He develops young coaches. He, main he maintains stability while also allowing his people to do their job. I also heard Jeff Choate will change our town, Nevada's college town. And as for football, he will run a fast practice. He's huge on fundamentals and will ensure that we have a tough and gritty team. Coach Choate has been at the pinnacle of college football. He knows what he wants and he knows how he's going to do it. And he will do it with tremendous support from our department. And we will ask a lot of our community. We are asking you to jump on board. We're asking you to support the leader of this program. Bet on us because we are moving forward and we're going to achieve great success. I also want to thank his wife, Janet. Um, she is all in, and you guys will have a chance to meet her. She knows the drill. They've been together since their college days. I think it's 28 years of marriage. They have two children who are out of the house and unfortunately couldn't be here. One played for him at Montana State, and he's living his best life in Bozeman, Montana. And their daughter, who is apparently Jeff Choate, um, is a, a sophomore at the University of South Carolina. And rumor has it that Jeff will bring her in on the big recruiting weekends because she is his secret weapon. So we are all in for a ride, and I couldn't be more excited. So please welcome the new leader and the new head coach of Nevada Wolfpack, Jeff Choke. It's a tough act to follow. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm more into the let's under-promise and over-deliver, okay? That's kind of been my MO. Um, what an awesome day. Weather was perfect. I mean, you can't beat that. I uh, really enjoyed getting an opportunity to talk to the team earlier. Hopefully, they get a little bit of a feel for what I'm about and how I'm going to go about my business here. But I'm really excited about what's in front of us here. This is a special place. Rich tradition in history. Um, I, was sit I was standing over there next to President Sandoval, and I'm looking over the top of the band, and I'm like, there's the little general. And I spent six years staring at him across the other way. <laughs> now I get to sit in the same chair he did. And so I, I pinch myself, I feel honored uh, to, to carry on, to be another link in the chain of the great tradition and history of Nevada Wolfpack football. I wanna thank President Sandoval and Stephanie for, for having the trust in me and giving me this opportunity. You know, she talked about a lot of things, and, you know, I, I'm proud of my resume. Um, I've, I've, I've earned the stripes and the skins that I have on the wall. But that came with a lot of sacrifice for my family. And for us to be able to, to get to a place where we get to be the leaders of the pack is truly special for us. Um, I know Jory and JC are really proud and, and excited. Janet's fired up, I can tell. And so that's a good thing. And um, it's a hell of a journey, I'll say that. It really is. And, and those of you that are in the coaching profession or in athletics in general, these jobs aren't easy to get. They aren't easy to get. And I got a good one because I know there's the ability for us to win championships here. And that's my expectation, and that's the mission we're on. And that mission started about two and a half hours ago when I got an opportunity to address the team for the first time. So thank you for the opportunity to be here. I'm excited, if you can't tell. And uh, it, it's gonna, I, I think you said it well, it's gonna be a fun ride. It's gonna be a fun ride. Um, it kind of dawned on me, we, one of the reasons we were a little tardy is I guess they have some pretty particular rules about when you can be introduced and they want you to sign on the dotted line first. And so we're waiting to get some details done on the contract. And um, that's when it kind of hit me. And, 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 it, and for Stephanie as well, I, I think that, you know, I did it, man. Everything that I worked for, everything that we sacrificed, 
I got to a place where I can lead a program and do it my way with the support of an administration that's aligned, which is cru crucial. And that was one of the most attractive things about this, getting a chance to spend time with the two of them and realize that they're, they're aligned and they know what it's going to take to be successful here. And now it's about pushing this thing forward, and that's my job. And so um, that high octane is going to be present. I promise you that. People are going to wonder, hey, what are we going to do on offense? What are we going to do? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to run the damn ball, all right? We're going to play great defense. We're going to be elite on special teams, and we're going to be disciplined and not beat ourselves. And that's a pretty good recipe for successful football. Now, depending on who our quarterback is, depending on who our skill players are, that might change the style, but the substance will never change. And that's what this program was built on for years and years and years. That Nevada tough, Nevada grit, the union, it starts up front, let's roll. That's what this is going to be back to, back to Nevada football. And I think that's what, uh, what the fans expect. This is a blue-collar, hard-nosed community, and I'm your guy. I'm your guy. So let's, let's roll up our sleeves together, and let's make this place special again. And I, I can't wait to, to dig in with the players, to get our staff on board, and get this thing rocking and rolling. And so um, I think maybe one of the questions people will go, well, you know, what, what are the characteristics of your program going to be? And so I'd say that it's, it's going to be pretty simple. We're going to select on character first, and we're going to be the toughest group on Saturday. And so that's, you know, be the most excited team to play every single time we go out there. We only get so many opportunities. And I, I, one of the things I shared with the football team, and I, and I think I might have shared it with, with the president yesterday as well, is like if you think about your life as a football field, and for those of you that compete in other sports, you know, think about that volleyball court, think about that soccer pitch, whatever. But if you think about your life as a football field, your time at the University of Nevada is a three-yard run. That's it. It's a three-yard run. And our job in athletics as coaches, as administrators, is to make sure that these kids' experience for that three-yard run is as elite as it can be. And right now, we don't get a do-over, so some of these guys got one yard left. We're going to make that a hell of a yard. Some of them got three left, we're going to make it a great three-yard run. But it's a very finite amount of time. It's so impactful in their life, and they're going to lean on these experiences for the rest of their life. And that's what I'm really the most passionate about now is, you know, really just taking care of my people and adding value to their life. And if I can do that every day, the result on the football field is going to take care of itself. And so, um, not long-winded. I'm sure we'll, are we taking questions afterwards? Or are we doing this on it here? Or what do we got going? Okay. All right. I'm, uh, I'm pretty much uh, what you see is what you get. I'm going to look in you in the eye. I'm going to shake your hand. I'm going to tell you what's going on. If it's screwed up, I'm going to say it's screwed up. If it's not, I'm going to tell you you're wrong. I'm right. It's okay. We can agree to disagree from time to time. Um, but it's going to be a blast, man. And I think I'm – I really do think I'm a great fit for this program and this community. And I think that's what it's all about, right? That's when the magic happens is when you get the right guy in the right place at the right time. And maybe there's other places that go, oh, gosh, that one, that one, that one. This was the right one for me. This was the right one for me because of this place, what it represents – how you expect us to play, and how we're going to produce. And so, hell of a day to be here, man, and can't be more proud to, to be a part of this program. Go Pack! Uh, Chris Murray, Nevada Sportsnet. Uh, if you could talk a little bit about your message to the team uh, when you got to speak with them today, what did you want to get across to them? Yeah, I think number one, I wanted to make sure they knew, hey, I, I know you're hurting. I know it's been hard on you. You didn't, you didn't ask for this situation. You know, this is this is out of your control, um, and it's going to be okay. And here's how I know it's going to be okay. And kind of talked about my background, my experience, uh, having been in that position before, uh, on both sides of it and really trying to be empathetic towards the experience that they're going through, but let them know, hey, we got a plan. It's, you know, I think one of the young men asked me, you know, what do you need from us? And I said, I need you to trust me. And, uh, and so that's gonna be a big part of what we're doing over the next 72 hours is we're speed dating, right? I'm meeting with each one of these kids and looking them in the eye and telling them what I'm about. And, 
and uh, you know we've got to develop that trust in a short amount of time and it's going to it's going to it's going to be an evolutionary process but i think that that was really try to calm the waters let them know hey there's somebody here who knows how how to make this thing grow and uh and i'm here for you and we'll get this thing rolling you mentioned that you're a really good fit for this program obviously you coaching at nevada six times at boise state battling for WAC championships what did you learn from your time you know playing against nevada during those seasons that you know can maybe apply to you being good in this job i think the one one of the hallmarks of, of Coach Hall's programs in particular was they had an identity. And I think that's really, really important. You know, when, when you, it didn't, you didn't have to turn the film on to know what you were going to get, if that makes sense. Like, they were going to be, they were going to play tough, physical brand of football. They were going to fight to the end. You know, every, that, that passion that they played, I mean, you could see it across the sideline. You could feel his heat sometimes, right? And so, you know, that was, that was something that you knew there was, it didn't matter what the scheme was their identity was always going to be the same and they weren't going to go away that kind of that backyard fist fight mindset and we had some unbelievable i was telling somebody today when was the last time you were in reno and our kicker missed an extra point basically that would have sent us to a rose bowl at boise so you know and then y'all all dry yeah yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah yeah i think there was a field rushing moment that took place and so um but you know and but that was what you got it didn't matter you know we return the kick we throw the ball down to the one yard line they fought to the very last very last second on that clock, and uh, that's the type of identity that, that I want to have here. I guess how will you balance your role with Texas? Are you going to continue with the Longhorns through the playoffs and, and you know, manage, you know, helping them try and yeah. win a national championship and build what you're trying to build here? So I think there's two things that go into that. Number one, my primary responsibility is to these young men in this institution at this point. Uh, but Coach Sarkeesian has been through these experiences too uh, as an assistant coach taking a head coaching role, and I think that – there's how many t- times you're going to get a chance to play for a national championship. And it's not really about me. It's about providing consistency for the players on the defensive side of the ball so that when we go into install meetings or we go to practice, the rhythm of their day is the same. And so the balancing act is really going to be once we start bowl practices. The good news is you know, I'll pretty much be here rocking and rolling until the 15th. We're not practicing until the 15th. And so I think it'll be a, the, you know, there's going to be some long days. Um, but I think the right thing to do is to, is to provide consistency and stability for the guys in the program there and finish the mission at Texas. Um, and in the interim, I will have had a chance to kind of put the pieces in place to move this thing forward, and a lot of the guys will be off campus during that period of time anyway. Mike Stevenson, also with Nevada Sportsnet. Once again, welcome to Reno, Coach. I have a lot of friends in Bozeman where I hear you'll never have to buy a drink again, more so because of your 4-0 and record against the Montana Grizzlies. I guess they called you the Grizz Slayer over there. I do want to ask, what is the importance of rivalry games? Of course, there's a big one down south uh, in this state. And also just what your time as a Bobcat, how that prepped you for this moment. Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, I love rivalry games. You know, I love them. And... Uh, because I've been pretty successful in it. Maybe that's part of it. You know, you don't like them if it goes the other way. But I noticed, like, there, like it, I was confused today. So I'm walking through the football facility, and there's a cannon on one end. And I'm like, wait a second. I'm pretty sure that cannon is, is in Vegas right now. And so this faux cannon needs to get out of there. There needs to be an empty spot there that kind of brings a little bit of anger every time we walk through that empty space. And we got to make sure that, that – uh, you know, there's days that you just don't wear red in Reno, let's be honest. And so we got to make sure that we understand how important that game is. And uh, we got to make sure that, you know, we make it a really good rivalry because of our performance on the field. And ultimately, I think the best, the best thing that you can say about a rivalry game is people are always going to circle that day on the calendar. When they stop circling that day on the calendar, it's just because it's just another game. We're going to beat them because they're on the schedule, not because it's a special day. And that's when you know you've taken care of business. I know you left Montana State on your own accord and, and were searching for bigger things. Why was this the right time to leave a job that you had like, at Texas and come and lead the Wolfpack? Yeah, I, this is what I was born to do, man. I mean, being a there's, there's a lot of rewards in being an assistant coach. There's nothing like putting the pieces together. And um, I, I, don't, you know, I don't think it's for everybody because there's dark days and not all of it goes well and you've got to have thick skin. You've got to stay off the Internet. Players should probably do that too. Um, but those are – and my wife. And so um, those are – things that you got to remember you know it's like but if you're built for it you're built for it and that's when I had the most satisfaction when I felt like I was making the biggest impact on the on the greatest number of individuals was having a chance to run an organization from top to bottom and uh, it's very very fulfilling and um, I guess maybe one of the things I learned at Texas is that what I do and how I do it travels anywhere whether that be in recruiting or motivation culture building um, X's and O's all those things 
Just one more. I, again, I do have. I started my career in Montana, so I got a lot of insight on you, and I guess we're going to get a lot of one-liners from. Well, you. hang on now. I, I got to know who you're talking to here. I need context. So <laughs> I, where I started in Billings, a, okay. but I happened to leave right before you uh, got the job. Um, but I heard in the short tour. In the short term, you get oh, what you go. get. In the long term, you get what you deserve. Can you explain that? Yeah, I told our players that today. You know that this that that's how life is, right? You know, I mean, everybody's not born with the same set of advantages or disadvantages. We all come to life in a different way. And the same thing's true as we go through our professional careers or athletic careers. Maybe as a freshman, it doesn't go the way you want. You get an injury, you got a red shirt. You know, right now they have opportunities to, to move on quickly if that's what they want to do. But I think the real test of a man or, and, and the grit part of it to me is, what are you going to do when it doesn't go your way? Are you going to have the fortitude to stick with it? Because in the short run, you can't control what's going to happen to you. I wanted to be a head coach a long time ago. I didn't control that. I just had to keep working and do it my way, treat people the right way, pour into my players, do everything I could to put myself in a position to get an opportunity. And then in the long run, you get what you deserve. Now, here's the problem. What do most people not do? They give up along the way. They don't make the long run. And so one of the goals for – one of the reasons why that quote is, is important to me and why our players, I think my former players will always remember that, is because those, those that made the long run, it was special to them. It was really special to them. And they valued that. And that's, I think, going to be one of the hallmarks of our program. You make the long run here, you're going to be a champion. Thank you, Coach. Do we have any more questions from the media? Andrew, Kurt? Just wanted to ask real quick about Chris Peterson and the impact he's had on your life and, and forming you into the coach you are today. Yeah, I, I, you know, going back to my high school days, uh, my high school football coach, my high school baseball coach, said I always wanted to be a coach. I mean, I looked up and admired those individuals and uh, had an opportunity to work for Chris for six years at Boise State and another two years at the University of Washington. And just to ha the, the, he had a sixth sense. He kind of always knew not just what the players and the organization needed, but even us as coaches. And we always used to joke that he had a, you know, he, he had a bug in our offices because every time we complain about something that come up in the staff room, just ironically on that same day, you know. Um, but he just had a really good a, a really good pulse of what was going on in the organization and knew kind of knew exactly the buttons to push. And that was just being really aware of what was going on and having his pulse on the on the on the organization. And that was always really impressive to me. But his compassionate interaction and how he how he led in a way that was demanding and not demeaning. Like, you know, I know uh, people are probably going to look at me and go, like, this guy's going to be a maniac on the football field. Watch me on game day. I'm not. That That's their day. Now, come to practices someday, we might have a different conversation. But ultimately, I think that's that's the, you know, being a leader and, and being able to make your point and being a, really a teacher, which is my background, and watching Chris kind of handle it, how he went about his business, that was a, a, having a front row seat to, to leadership excellence is a pretty pretty cool thing. And I'd say Steve has done this very, very similar things. I've been extremely impressed with the job that he's done at Texas, um, how he's embraced the aspect of culture and how that can drive an organization to, to a new place. Texas always had good players. They didn't have the right culture, and I think Steve brought that. And so those watching those two guys kind of go through their maturation as coaches has been invaluable for me. You mentioned alignment when talking about the administration here. I guess what did you hear from your conversations with Stephanie and President Sandoval that made you believe that you'd be supported at the correct level to be able to win championships? Yeah, you know, one of the unique things about President Sandoval is, and I think, I think I asked him last night at dinner what makes this place unique, and he and it wasn't you know it's never any one thing in particular. It's everything in general, and that's what I got out of. It. But really, what came out was how much he loves this community and this university. I was blown away by that. Like, I felt the emotion from him. And you can't tell me that he's not going to do everything he can to make this place the best it can be. Like, I walked away from that conversation knowing that uh, he might not be able to write a check for everything we want, but he's going to support it if we feel like it's the best thing for our student athletes. And I know that's what drives Stephanie, is that, that this is about these kids and their experience here and how do we make it the best that we can make it. And then the byproduct act is we get, a, we get to bring the community in and we get to enjoy this this spectacle on game day, and we get to make this place proud, and uh, and really create something unique and special here in Reno. Do you see similarities between this opportunity and, and Boise, just in terms of community size and potential support for a program, and being able to build what what they've built with? Yeah, the I think they were very. I mean, I I haven't been back to Boise since 2011 either, so my perspective is a little bit skewed that way. And it was clearly it was. 1A, 1B, however you want to define it, year in and year out with Nevada and Boise. And so I think we always kind of thought it was very similar. I thought Nevada maybe at the time had a couple of advantages over Boise. 
um, just the proximity to Northern California recruiting grounds and some of those types of things. Um, I couldn't tell you how that's flipped, obviously, but um, I know this. That's the way it should be. I think I think the Mountain West is at its best when when Nevada's in the conversation year in and year out. Just the last question for me. I guess what most excites you to be the head coach of, of Nevada Wolfpack? Our potential. You know, it's what's out in front of us right now. Is this? This is you know, this is a place where it can be done because it has been done. And uh, if you go to a place where that's never been, never been done, that's hard. 124 years of football here, 14 championships. I mean, let's go. Let's let's write the new chapter right now. And that's what this is about. And I hope y'all will go on the, along for the ride. Thank you, everyone. We'll, I'll call. Thank you. Thank you.